Chapter 19. Remaking Friends. Angel woke the next day, unusually tired. It took her an extra 15 minutes to get ready for the day, something the corporal of the bunks didn't like. As she trudged down to the mess hall to grab a piece of fruit, she couldn't help thinking about yesterday and how everything went wrong. She had gotten Comet more angry than she could remember, all because of her lack of tact. Of course, just barging in and confronting him about the beloved sister probably wasn't the best idea, especially when Comet cared for her as much as he did. She gave a large sigh and kept her head down. Her eyes were still puffy from yesterday when she sobbed into her pillow, fully believing that Comet hated her. Valerie had brought down Philomena from the bunks, something she got yelled at for as well, in an attempt to comfort Angel, but Angel was just too upset. When she was crying... It felt like tons of needles were being stabbed into her chest. It hurt her, too, to remember, but her parents used to fight like how she and Comet just did all the time. It would usually start with her mother wanting to save the Bat Pony race and her father arguing against it, saying he had a family to take care of. You can't just run off and abandon your family, her father shouted from down the hall. Angel felt her heart freeze for a second as she played with a couple of crayons and a piece of paper. I'm not rowing off, her mother replied. I'm going to save our species. We don't need any saving, dear. Our colony is doing fine. Then why are we on the brink of zero increase? We need all the help that I can do. Sweetie, her father pleaded. You know this. Why are you arguing with me? Her mother shouted angrily. Because, because of what you want to do. I don't care if you can help. You're my wife and Angel's mother. You can't just leave us. You know very well I should. Angel also needs to know why I have to leave, because she will be needed for the same reason. No, her father said in a deeply serious voice. What? No, I will not let that future befall our daughter. And why not? It's a glorious future for her. To be the colony's whore her father shouted. No, to be the mother of the next generation of bad ponies, her mother yelled. Angel wasn't the smartest pony, but even as a filly, she learned her mother was one of the last fertile mares of her colony. Bad ponies, after years of breeding in their own colonies, had developed a genetic disorder where most of the mares couldn't successfully have foals. It usually took a regular mare nine failed attempts to have one successful pregnancy. A lot of bat pony foals were miscarried, causing their population to drop into an instantly low number. And most fertile mares, meaning those who could have foals in one try, were often kept in the colonies to breed new life and were heavily guarded. By a stroke of luck, Angel's mother was one such mare, and Angel was suspected of carrying her mother's fertility gene. Angel snapped back from the mental replay of her parents' arguments in the past to find herself holding up the line at the mess hall. She grinned awkwardly to the chef, picked up an orange, and then darted off. Angel staved off the urge to cry again as she approached Philomena's room, but with her head down, she didn't realize that there was a pony in front of her. She ran headfirst into a piece of gold, and her head made a loud ringing noise as the pony shouted, Whoa! The two toppled over. Angel's head hurt as she lay on top of the other pony, so she rubbed her forehead. Hey! came the other pony. Watch for your... Angel! Angel opened her one eye as the pony twisted on the ground beneath her to see a white Pegasus stallion reach up and hug her. Comet? She asked nervously, and the hug got marginally tighter. Well, duh, he responded. Who else would just randomly hug another pony who tried to run them over? His tone was unusually happy and sweet, something Angel was not used to. She didn't really hug him back, so she just kind of stood there, feeling awkward until he let her go smiling widely at the sudden bat pony. Hey, what's wrong? He then asked, his voice losing the happy tone. Angel looked away, ashamed, and mumbled. I'm sorry. What? Comet replied. Angel turned her head back to him, eyes red and puffy, and said, I'm sorry, Comet. I'm sorry about talking about Nova. Angel's head dropped into a couple small sobs, a comet felt a horrible rotting sensation in his chest. He took his mother's advice and was cheerful to her, but apparently Angel didn't let it go. 
Stealing his will, he said gently, Angel, hey, Angel. I'm sorry, Comet. Angel spoke, ignoring his words. I didn't mean to make you upset. I just... I didn't know how to tell you, so I blurted it out. I know you probably hate me and don't want to date me, but can we still at least be friends? I just... I can't... Uh. Angel trailed off, sniffling and gritting her teeth. She was sure he was going to just yell at her again, just like her first cult friend back in the cave she lived in. Instead... A calm and gentle hoof reached out and placed itself on her own. Angel looked at it and still sniffled. However, she managed to follow the white hoof back to the white chest, neck, and head of Comet. He smiled gently to her, trying to keep himself composed as he spoke to Angel. Angel, I'm the one who's sorry. He spoke as gently as he could. I overreacted to you, and I apologize for that. I treated you like a jerk, and I feel horrible. He reached up with his other hoof and gently wiped away a couple tears off of Angel's face, just like he used to do with Nova. You know, he said, it, the sad look just doesn't work for you. Angel managed to chuckle out of that, halting the flow of tears, and Comet gently pressed his forehead against hers. Angel, he said with a smile, I promise you, I will never get angry at you like that again. I've always been touchy about Nova, but you're just not the same. And at the some, some other pony I can get angry with. If you want, I would definitely like to keep dating you. Angel's big golden eyes flickled up and magically met with Comet's blue eyes. They just sat there, staring at each other. Finally, Angel broke the silence and said, Yeah, I'd really like that. A huge grin broke out on Comet's face, and he gave her another hug, and then this time, Angel returned it. The sad and lonely Pegasus and the loud and obnoxious Bat Pony just sat there, feeling happy that the little spat hadn't ruined their relationship. As Comet sat there, he could almost see Nova smiling at him. The odd pair didn't end the hug until a set of guards were rounded the hallway, and the two bolted off to their post, happy to be friends again. Inside Philomena's room, they took up their usual posts as Valerie just stood there, clearly unhappy with their tardiness. As punishment, Comet agreed to clean the room while Angel played with Philomena. The trio of females resumed their assault on the only stallion in the room, playing pranks and passing the day along, only reassuming their stoic look when the corporal popped his head in to investigate the noises. Later that day, after their shifts ended, the trio sat in the guard relaxation room playing a game that Comet dominated the griffin and bat pony at. Luna to E4, he stated proudly as he moved his miniature black figurine of Luna to the white sculpt of Celestia. Angel's jaw dropped as she lost yet again and then put on her pouty face. Uh, this game is too hard to play, she complained. Think I like checkers better. Yeah, Valerie chimed in while she was playing with a deck of cards. I'd rather play Prada. This game is boring. Oh, come on, Comet whined. I played both of your games and got my flank kicked. You both can stand losing a bit in chess. It's more fun when you lose, Angel piped up, causing Comet's face to redden as Valerie laughed. That isn't very nice, Comet stated flatly. Angel just sat there on her hind legs and shrugged, tilting her head slightly to the side. Whatever, Comet grumbled. I'll get the checkers. Angel squealed happily and reached across the table to hug him, knocking over a lot of pieces at the same time. Valerie just laughed as Angel squeezed Comet's neck to the point where she began to choke him, and Comet tried to force her hooves away from his neck. Flustered, he went off and got the game of checkers while Angel and Valerie cleaned up the chess pieces. A long while afterwards, the trio sat around the table, each clearly tired but staring at each other suspiciously. They each held up a set of five cards, and a deadly silence permeated the room, until Valerie said, You both ready? Angel and Comet nodded at once. All three slammed their cards onto the table. Under Angel's dark hoof sat three nines, a Princess Celestia, and an ace. Comet's hoof was two fours, two princes, and a seven. While Valerie's claw was a six, three Princess Lunas, and an eight. I win again! Valerie shouted happily as Comet's face soured. Angel narrowed her golden eyes at her, but smiled. 
<laughs> I gave you that win anyway, she stated smugly, and Valerie clicked her beak. Well, then you shouldn't have let me win, she retorted. An angel's smile melted into a frown. 